Game started. Oh, here's another game. Let's see. It's my time to play E4. And Joaca from Mexico plays D6. So I usually just play D4 in response to that. Try and grab the center and see what he's doing with D6. It's a flexible move and can have <clears throat> a bunch of different ideas. This looks like a uh, King's Indian setup. So let's see if I can transpose into that. So he's immediately hitting at the center there. But if he trades, I guess I'm not afraid of that. <clears throat> okay, so this is uh, setting it up for uh, if I play uh, d5, then he has the option to exchange it there. I might want to play d5 anyway, but I don't have to play it just yet. Um, kind of want to see what he's doing with his other knight. If he goes here and blocks the bishop, then I might uh, play h3, yeah, to keep it out of this square. <clears throat> so that uh, my, my bishop is stable there. Yeah, let's go ahead and castle, and then I'll play on d5 on the next move. Uh, so this is a slow kind of King's Indian where, um, yeah, I think d5 is going to try and slow down Black's development. It kind of keeps his uh, pieces imprisoned to some degree. Uh, but he can attack. He has points to attack here. His pawn on e4 is weak. So he might try something like <clears throat> knight to uh, c5 there. No, he hasn't done it. So I'm going to get my knight off the f file and <clears throat> allow myself to play either f3 or f4. And also adding more support to the e4 pawn here. Hmm. So I wonder if I can play f4 here. Oh, no, normally that's not the plan. Usually a black is uh, attacking on the king side and white is just holding the line. But black has made a few moves on the queen side here that don't seem strictly necessary. <clears throat> and uh, my pieces are all out, so maybe, maybe it's possible to play this way. So if I push, he takes, I take. He gets a very nice outpost for his knight there. Um, which I can challenge with my knight. And do I get any squares? Looks like I can get the uh, f4 and the d4 squares. So let's see how it goes. Um, if he doesn't take, I can push ahead with uh, f5 at some point, maybe even right away. Ah, yeah, I thought he would take. It's kind of the idea in these positions, so... <clears throat> Black wants to give himself a good, position, uh, good place for his uh, knight there. So now um, this pawn is loose. Um, Let's see, a knight could come in to this square and then to this square. It's always a little bit dangerous. So I think, though, let's play this knight c4 move, challenging his knight. 
if I exchange it off and he has to take back with a pawn, um, that's probably good for me. I'll get this uh, past deep pawn, which could become strong. And um, otherwise, he has to take... Ah, but I'm, I'm losing a pawn here. I missed that. Yeah, yeah, I removed a defender from my... Uh, from my e pawn. Too bad. On the other hand, I guess uh, if he takes here, we took with the knight. If he takes with the queen, uh, this bishop is loose. <clears throat> Okay, so knight takes, queen takes, bishop takes pawn, queen takes bishop, or even bishop takes pawn. So my bishop here is attacking his rook, and his bishop would be attacking my rook. I take, he takes, I take, he takes. Looks like he's just winning material there. Well, he gets a pawn. I get a pawn, he gets a pawn, he stays a pawn up. Let's see. Or I could exchange and um, retreat the bishop, but then this, this pawn is still loose, but uh, I can put my rook there and, and get this pawn, I guess. So, queen takes knight, and then I have to do something with the bishop. So, how about um, bishop to this square? So, um, I can threaten to take here now. <clears throat> he can come back and defend it, and uh, I'll get my rook off of this corner square here where it's indirectly being attacked by uh, Black's bishop. Let's see, does black have any other plans? Um, can he try a sacrifice here? Bishop takes h3, pawn takes. No, he just comes and defends, okay. So if he defends that pawn, I should probably, well, let's kick, no, I can't kick the queen, can I? If I kick the queen, the queen grabs my uh, bishop. Do I have any discoveries? I could kick the queen from this angle, but then he could grab that pawn, okay. No kicking. Let's just save the <coughs> B pawn there and put my rook on a better square. Hmm, now yeah, he's threatening to take that rook. <laughs> That's not very friendly. Um, let's see. So. Queen takes, queen takes, bishop takes, rook takes, and he wins the exchange. If I uh, put my queen here, he can play queen takes, rook takes, bishop takes, and he's got two rooks for the queen. Um, sometimes an interesting material balance. Let's see, is there something else I could try? Well, the problem is my uh, my bishop is still hanging, so that's probably my best bet. Check. Hmm, well, he just forces an exchange and... Uh, Check. <clears throat> then he wins the... then he wins the exchange here. That was well done. Okay, so it's two rooks and a bishop against two bishops and a rook. And uh, black still has his extra pawn. So let's put these on light squares so his bishop can't attack them.
So what's interesting about these positions is uh, when I have uh, one rook and my opponent has two, so I'm down the exchange, uh, sometimes his rooks are slightly uh, redundant. You know, they, they cover the same squares, whereas the two bishops uh, complement each other. They cover different squares. So it's better for me in this case not to trade rooks um, and instead try and reduce the number of pawns if I want to try and draw this. and uh, find a way to attack on the light squares where I have an advantage with my bishop. So, let's see, he was able to avoid a trade that way. Okay, let's see if I can get my rook to be a little more active. And black strategy here, I think, uh, should be just to trade off the dark squared bishop so he has straightforward two rooks against uh, rook and bishop. And I think he can force a trade by going to this square. So probably it was a good idea to cover that with my rook. Ah, so he's going after pawns. Pawns, he can do that. So this will become a dangerous passer if I let him take that, right? So let's hold on to it. Okay, so he pins the bishop, um, and he can attack my rook now. Let's see, and it's not so easy to get over and defend it. Hmm. Mm -hmm Let's try attacking a different pawn, see what he does. That also defends my bishop. I mean, defends my rook. Yeah, he just plays there. So, what have I got? So I could uh, move my bishop away and allow him to trade rooks, which would probably be to his advantage, but I don't see a lot else that I can do. Hmm. Yeah, this is one of those positions where you're all tied up. All tied up and nowhere to go. Yeah, let's try moving my king around. Check.
So you really want to activate all your pieces in the endgame, including the king. The king can be an active piece. So if I can get that out there, doing something useful. Ah, that's unfortunate that uh, limits the squares the rook can go to. Okay, now I pretty much have to untangle here. So, it's too bad I can't um, attack something with this bishop. <clears throat> so I guess I have to go there, try and keep, try and keep defending that pawn somehow. Check. Yeah, I don't have a lot of moves here. All right, if I go there. <clears throat> yes, so there's a checkmate threat. And uh, so this bishop can't move. If this bishop moves, I lose a pawn. My pawns are all fixed, so the only piece I can move is my king. <laughs> and uh, let's see, the only square I can go to is here. So let's see what he does. He still has to uh, win somehow. He brings his king in. Advances his pawns. Yeah, it's very logical play. We'll see if I get a chance here. I'm hoping against hope there's some kind of uh, shot I will get at some point when he tries to open things up. He has to push things forward at some point so he can try and win. Well, when he takes away that square, um, let's see, that gives me, um, this bishop is free to move now, so. Well, why don't we put it on a more interesting square here? Yeah, if he ever comes back, though, I have to always um, be able to defend the square uh, e1 because he has the checkmate there. What do you do, king f7? I mean, uh, if he wants to move his king back and forth, we could have a draw, I suppose. <laughs> At any time, he could um, check <clears throat> sack his uh, rook for one of my bishops, and that would probably be okay check. too. Probably be winning. Okay, so now he's threatening. Oh, he's not really threatening that. Hmm. Because the bishop guards that square. 
So, let's see, can I attack his rook? Can I move this bishop somewhere? And why don't I attack his pawn? Ah, I got a square. Yay. It's always nice to have an extra square for your king so you're not facing the threat of imminent death at every moment. Yeah, I was expecting that. <clears throat> yeah, so now he can threaten to uh, take that bishop. And then this pawn becomes very dangerous. Difficult for me to stop, in fact. Um, what can I do? Any counterplay? If I move the bishop away, I'm just going to lose that pawn anyway, because he can just take it. So I think have to uh, do something else. Maybe get this bishop in a better position. Let's attack his rook and force him to choose here. It's always dangerous to force your opponent to make a good move, but uh, I don't really have a lot of choices here anyway. So the square of the pawn, my king is outside the square of the pawn. After the exchange, he takes, I take, Check. he uh, he gets uh, the bishop to this square and protects that square. And I think he's uh, pretty much winning. Checking like this um, just helps me, gets me a little bit closer to uh, to these pawns. But uh, usually, yeah, when you have the exchange, at some point you're, when you're all the way in the end game, you need to give it up. You need to give it back in order to get a winning advantage with the pawn or something. Well, let's see. What's he going to do? You could start pushing pawns on the king side. That would be a strategy. Okay, so let's see. My bishop is not under threat anymore. Um, I can just protect the pawn. two bishops over here, and his bishop and mine both appear to be uh, pretty much dead pieces. They're acting like uh, pawns in these pawn chains, although they do uh, help solidify the pawn chains, makes it impossible for uh, them to be attacked. Except, uh, let's see, there's a loose pawn over here I could potentially attack, I guess. So the action really is this rook against this bishop and uh, his two pawns against my one. Still should be enough for him to win here, but he's got to come up with a winning plan. Ah, trading off that bishop. That's an idea. Let's see. 
if I take um, all of his uh, pawns are on dark squares and I'll never be able to attack them. <clears throat> Let's see, is there any other tricks? Can I attack his rook? I can't, I can't get in to attack his rook, unfortunately. And if I go here, let's see, he can move his bishop and attack my bishop. Yeah, so I think I'll just uh, repeat, because this bishop doesn't have a lot of good squares to go to. I don't think it's any help over here. So, back to here. Yeah, that's interesting. So um, if I push my pawn now, and uh, instead of taking, he could check me first. I could go over there, or there, and he could take. I would still get to take it back. I think, you know, it's to my advantage to dissolve pawns as much as possible. Uh, pawn forward check is a good move here. It would force my king to an unfortunate check. square. Yeah. yeah, I can't take that pawn because he will take my bishop. And I can't come forward, which is what I want, because his bishop is guarding that. And I don't want to go to this square um, because that will allow Time him to warning. attack my pinned bishop. So I'm just going to go straight back. Check. Ah, and he wins it that way. He wins anyway. Okay, let's see, do I have anything? There, I'm going to resign here. I think uh, he played a good game, and... Uh, We'll take a look at that in a postmortem. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Bye. White resigns.